my name's Kathy A. And today I'm going to do a very special show. It's close to my heart because it's one of the oldest cosmetic companies in the world. And it's also UK based. Um, you know, so all my friends in the uh, UK uh, have access to these products. Thank goodness we finally got something that you all can, uh, can relate to. Um, I'm actually going to give you a little bit of the history of this very special company called Rimmel or Rimmel. I call it Rimmel, but it's probably Rimmel. Um, and I think you may find it quite interesting actually because it is so old and I didn't realize some of these cosmetics were as old as they are. Of course way back in Egypt uh, Cleopatra and uh, um, the Egyptians had their own version of uh, mascara made with crocodile dung and, and other things but um, uh, thank goodness that uh, Mr. Rimmel uh, change that. <laughs> The Rimmel story actually begins in France. In 1834, 14-year-old Eugene Rimmel moved to London with his father, who was a famous French perfumer. He and his father opened the House of Rimmel near the Strand in London. They sold perfumes and soaps to royalty around Europe and even became the official perfumer to Queen Victoria. As Eugene experimented with face creams and lotions, he created hygiene products like the infamous toilet vinegars. They're herbal and floral infused vinegars that were used as face toners and hair washes. Eugene also pioneered the art of cosmetic advertising and he cleverly put his product ads in theater programs as well as make leaflets for handouts and newspaper ads. Using coal dust and petroleum jelly as base ingredients, Eugene created a lash coating he called mascara. It was applied using a flat brush and it was so popular that the word Rimmel actually means mascara in several languages. Eugene also pioneered modern cosmetics packaging and marketing. He created the self-service dispensary which forever changed the way we shop for cosmetics and actually probably helped with shoplifting. <laughs> um, the Rimmel family sold the business to a marketing firm in 1949 who liked to appeal to the Hollywood actress look and a lot of women in the post-war era were interested in that and they marketed themselves as beauty with a budget. Purse proud lady, why pay more? Beauty's yours for one in four was a big slogan. In the swing in 1960s, it was really hip to be a girl from London. So became the new slogan, get the London look. The company changed hands several times in the 1970s and 80s, but was ultimately purchased by a French perfume company called Cody, ironically based in New York City. In 2001, Rimmel hired Kate Moss, a supermodel, to be the face for their company. Kate's look can be edgy, elegant, punk, hippie, or chic, and she remains a stable image in their ad campaign. In addition to Kate, Rimmel also hired other famous faces like Lily Cole, singer Sophie Ellis Bexter, Canadian model and activist Coco Roca, Japanese superstar and singing recording artist Ayumi Hamasaki, American actress Zoe Deschantel, and one of the more famous faces, Georgia May Jagger, who is the daughter of Rolling Stone Mick Jagger with Jerry Hall. She actually is, um, along with Kate, one of the main faces of the products. In 2013, in October, Rimmel added their newest face, British pop star Rita Ora, who will promote a nail and lipstick line. Cody also owns several other fragrance and cosmetic companies, such as OPI, 
Philosophy Sally Hansen and NYC New York Color But we must thank Eugene Rimmel, the Prince of Perfume and Pioneering for today's cosmetics as we know them. This past year, Rimmel celebrated 180 years of beauty and uh, I'm really glad they are still with us. Let's get back to our tutorial. I wanted to go into the nails before I start with anything else because I like um, Rimmel um, nail polish. I guess I just got a bad color. And this is the new Salon Pro line. And I actually, it's shiny and it looks almost like a gel, but you need at least two coats for it to last and it took a little while to set. Once it's set, it's pretty rock hard. But this is just a butt ugly color. I, it looks like there's moss growing out of my nails. <laughs> and I did want to do this part live because this is the 60 second uh, Rimmel nail polish. I just want to try it and see if it actually does set in 60 seconds. So I have just painted my nail just now with the 60 second nail polish and on the rest of my nails is this butt ugly nail polish. This is their Salon Pro line. Um, I don't know if it's puke green. What is the color? Oh, it's bad. bad. Number 557, yes sir. It's called yes sir. Oh, military. It's a military green, khaki green. Okay. 60 seconds. It is not dry yet. It is not dry in 60 seconds. I did have this underneath and it worked really well. I know Melissa uh, Raymond didn't like it because she said it, it chipped and cracked and everything, but I had it on and I put papers and folders and everything else at work and I didn't have a problem. So I thought the 60 second was pretty nice. Okay. It's, it's almost there, but it's, it's a little more than 60 seconds. I would say more closer to a, a minute and a half. Anyway, um, I also love these. This is another line of Rimmel, and I think they're changing the packaging, and that's why these are so inexpensive. They were all on sale for 75% off, so I pay the equivalent of maybe 80 pence each for these. So they, I think they were a dollar fifty or something like that. So those are really nice. I love Rimmel um, nail polishes a lot. I think they're wonderful things. All right, I'm eating a Weight Watchers English Toffee Crunch. Anyway, I am going to take you back and show you where I started from with this face. There's actually two different kinds of makeup on my face. And um, we'll just start back from scratch. You know how wonderful it is to see me with no makeup on. But I'm starting with a fully moisturized face, and I will add the primer and uh, put on the makeup. So we'll start from scratch and we'll see you in just a moment. All right, a double shockaroo here. Here I am with my real hair. You don't see that too often. It's actually starting to grow back. Now this is the Rimmel BB Cream, which I absolutely hate. It was just too hard to use. This is the Rimmel Stay Matte Primer. This is their newest face primer. And I'm just going to put a little padding into the pores. It actually works fairly well as a pore filler and along the St. Bernard lines, just under the eyes, around the nose. This is the Exaggerate Eye Primer. It's an eyeshadow primer. It's kind of an oily, wet one, and I've saved the packaging because you know what I'm going to do with this after the demonstration. Just rolling one little spindle full up. I'm just going to blend that into my eye and rolling one other little spindle full up. Great face. Oh my god, I hate seeing this. <laughs> and here is the Stay Matte Foundation, brand new. And I took 91 in light ivory because I thought the ivory, the 100, was going to be like the uh, Rimmel's Lasting Finish, which is very dark. This just reminds me of toothpaste. It's so thick and dry. I'm making an attempt to stipple it on 
and it's really like stippling on toothpaste so I am going to probably stop the color is a little bit light and the lighting is really harsh because I have my makeup mirror on I'm just gonna blend it with my fingers and the Sun came out just now through the window so it just made it even lighter and I look like I'm putting clown face on or it's some kind of goth convention I usually do put my makeup over the edge of my lips but I never put it in my eyelid area. I always think it creases and causes havoc there. So I'm trying again with a stippling brush, but it's just causing lines and craters and things. So I'm blending it out. Really not a big fan of this particular makeup. All right, on the other side I have match perfection and this is a, a little bit more moisturizing it actually goes on a little wet it's more really in tune for drier skin uh, it's a similar color to this I probably would go with a darker color this is I believe um, light ivory or nude light nude but it matches the other one that's too light so it's working for me but it's so funny one side of my face is very dry and the other side is way too wet it's easy to spread uh, the match perfection with a stippling brush I don't like either one they're both going back okay and I'm just smoothing out the lines and nooks and crannies where it had settled funny all around the edge I know it's hard to believe but my hair has grown in a lot since I've been taking the biotin and I was putting hemorrhoid cream <laughs> in my hair that's another that's another video okay this is the match perfection concealer and I really like this it's it's so emollient it's like a light foundation and I am just hitting that center zone there the little Kim Kardashian triangle and the third eye and all that it blends nicely I forgot my my little blending brush for concealer so I'm using a slightly larger brush than probably you should but you know what? I've used my fingers for these things in the past so you really can't be that picky about it I'm just blending it all in to make sure it looks nice and around the nose around the eyes this blends really well and you can actually wear this under your eyes if you have crow's feet now I'm using the stay matte powder and I believe that's a medium light color and I'm just pressing it in boy you can see the indentation on my forehead where I put it and where it was <laughs> there we go I think I fixed it there yeah it's it mattifies um, if you've got a really greasy BB cream or I use it over the top of BB creams all the time don't really need too much of it on that side because it's so powder dry there and it cracks like cupcake icing so there's quite a difference between the two sides but I'll make it work this is the natural bronzer I believe it's called sunlight just using a small stipple brush for that making the fish face making a long triangle I did in slow motion so you could see it whoops using a little bit too much there a little heavy-handed um, the light is shining on my face so it's a little um, awkward the lighting is strange so it looks more severe than it is I look like I put too much on but actually I didn't now I'm going around the edge of my chin and my, I should say my double chin and jawline area it's a face slimming trick and normally I go around the upper two corners of my face as well to cause like an oval shape in the center uh, I look so proud of myself don't I <laughs> now this is the match perfection blush it's two colors it's actually a dark mauve and a dark corally orange I'm gonna blend the two of them together tap off the end on my brush oh that was very poetic and I'm just gonna put that on there and uh, two fingers away from the nose is a good starting point you don't want to get your blush too close to your nose okay going a little heavy-handed there with the blush again you know the lighting is a little weird because I have a makeup mirror in front of me flashing a white light 
I don't need any more there, but I seem to be. Yeah, okay. Good enough. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know why I felt I needed more blush there. Eek! This is, uh, Helen sent me this. This is the Wake Me Up uh, Shimmer. It's a radiant shimmer, and it's it's a little bit too light to be a blush, so I use it kind of as a highlighter and put it over the top part of my blush. It makes a nice glow. Now this is for brows. This is the pencil in Hazel. It's number two, and I make sure it's sharp. I'm turning my uh, makeup mirror on to the scary side, the really close-up side, so I can see what I'm drawing in. And I'm just making little tiny feathery uh, little lines like grass on paintings we used to do when we were kids, and also little dots too. Don't like to go too heavy-handed on my brows, but I don't want them to be sparse because that can really age you. This is a fairly nice pencil actually. I was more impressed with it than I thought I would be. And I always sharpen it. There we go. A couple more lines, making that eyebrow up. Some of you who have really large eyebrows are probably laughing and going, where are they? Okay, I'm using the dorky little brush on the other end of that just to fluff up what I just drew on so that it blends more evenly in with the natural eyebrow. That's not too bad. And I'm not smiling because I'm proud of myself. I'm smiling so I don't frown because I look awful when I frown. Now this is one of the, uh, the eye trios. This is number 621 in Orion. And I'm using the lightest shade in this trio. It's kind of a shimmery light cream color. And it's taking probably about eight coats to get any kind of a buildup of the color. Uh, I'm not that impressed with the eyeshadows from Rimmel. I'm wondering if maybe I should have wet the brush. Now this is a quad, and this is number 29. It's called Afternoon Tea. And, oh, I'm looking at that awful nail polish again. I just, don't, you know, the nail polish is good, but not that color. It's called Yes Sir. And I'm stuck with it on my nails for a little while here. Okay, now I'm going to use the light matte tan color in this quad. The afternoon tea quad. I guess it's kind of looks like tea with cream in it. And I'm just making a, a bit of a crease because I have hooded eyes. Being careful not to go onto the lid and be careful to not go all the way up to the brow. Just kind of hitting that area just above the actual crease where the socket ends. And now I'm going to take with a smaller brush, a smudge brush, some of the really dark color and I'm just going in the outer third of my eyelid, making kind of a smarty or an M&M size uh, shape there at the end. And I'm going on the other side. My eyes are shaped slightly differently, so they, when I put eyeshadow on, it's never exact on both sides. So I try to go back and forth until they look sort of the same. I haven't blended yet, but I'm going to add some of this taupe color that's down here. It's kind of a shimmer, so I'm not putting it in the, above the crease. I'm putting it right next to the dark third, so it kind of gradiates. And now I'm going to blend all of these colors together. And This is a, an IT Cosmetics blending brush. There's nothing on it. There's no color on it. And I'm just going in and up until it softens that look. You should never have harsh lines on your eyes. Okay, that's not too bad. You can always fix it later. Now this cute little thing um, Helen also sent me. This is the Glam Eyes HD Quad in Heart of Gold and I love this little brown stripe 
My only complaint with these little compacts is that the little stripes are very difficult to um, pull from. I mean, you have to use a tiny little brush or a Q-tip to get into those little lines. I would have much preferred, you know, like squares. And I'm going into the light pink color for the inner tear duct area just to brighten that up. And then I'm going right under the brow, just a thin little line. Not a big old honking stripe, but just a thin little line. It's just to catch the light a little bit. Okay, I think the shadowing's done for now. Now on my inner rim of my lower part of my eye there, the lower lid, see on the inner rim, this is nude, scandal eyes. It's very creamy. Um, some people who have itchy eyes may not want to do this. And now on the outside, on the top, I'm using a gray called Guilty Gray. It's a scandalized big old jumbo stick. It's number four. And I'm just kind of going over a little bit on the edge with that. You can also shadow and shade with this and blend it out like you would in eyeshadow. I'm just kind of uh, reinforcing the darker part on the end. So that's scandalize. Now I'm curling my lashes, which I hate to do, and of course I've not done it long enough because I'm impatient. I'm making a college try here. La la la. I'm going to use two mascaras. These both are probably the most popular ones. The first one is Lash Accelerator. And it has something that looks like a ruler on the side, but it is not centimeters or inches. It is the percentage of volume you get when you use it. And it's some weird number, like 128% or something. It's like, are you kidding me? Okay, so here we go. Just jiggling it from the... As close to the base of my lashes as I can get and I'm jiggling it around so that it gets evenly distributed in between the lashes and then I'm kind of pulling up on them to try to get some volume. It's a very sloppy mascara and I always have little dings and blotches afterwards, little spots after I use this particular mascara. So it's a very wet formula. It's taking quite um, a lot to get some volume and length out of this. It's supposed to be really good for your lashes. So, I mean, it looks okay, but it's just not my favorite mascara. Now, this one is brand new. It's the Retro Glam Mascara. Ooh, 1960s. And this is the darkest black that they have. Cool packaging. Yeah, looks like John Lennon glasses. Here we go. And now I am putting that on. I don't like the shape, the hourglass shape of the mascara. It's a little bit on the clumpy side and it leaves little fibers on the edges of my lashes. So it does seem to build them faster than the uh, lash accelerator does. I'm doing the lower lashes, trying to build up a little bit more volume and length. Really having a hard time with this. And also, now I know what Melissa Raymond means by crunchy lashes, because this gives you crunchy lashes. They dry and they're so brittle. They're like little twigs at the end of your eyes. So I'm not sure if, if uh, I would recommend either of these mascaras. It just baffles me that a company that was basically formed from mascara has such crummy ones. Now I have to take my uh, e.l.f. makeup remover pen and pick up all of the little dots that the mascara left under my eyes and there's a ton of them on both sides but mostly on the uh, lash accelerator side. Okay, a last step. We're going to use Scandalized Thick and Thin Eyeliner and they show in the diagram on the packaging a thin line and a thick line and I thought it was a double-ended 
uh, eyeliner. It's actually one eyeliner that's slanted, so you're supposed to use the teeny tiny tip for the thin line and the thick side um, for the for the thicker line. And I just put it on, and it's one big mess line. But it goes on nicely, and it stays all day, so I really don't have any complaints about it other than the packaging is just kind of laughable because what you put on your eyes is and the way you put it on, it doesn't matter if it's slanted or not. It's such a small slant that it just goes on the way it goes on. And I kept the packaging for this because you know what's happening with that one. <laughs> Okay, we're on to the lips, and this is Exaggerate Lip Liner in East End Snob, number 063. It's one of my favorite colors because it's very similar to the color of the inside of my lip, which is the color you should never go darker than. And uh, I keep finding all these dings and dents from the makeup. Both of those makeups were not, I would not recommend either of them. And I'm just lining my actual lips. Just going over the top with a thicker line. Oops. And it broke. It happens a lot of times when you have those uh, turn up type uh, lip pencils. So just turned up a little bit more. I break them all the time. I think I'm a little overzealous with how I apply. Funny name, East End Snob. I found there were more snobs on the West End than on the East End. Okay, now these are the Kate lipsticks, and I depotted them, so this is number eight. And I debated wearing that, but uh, I'm not going to. I really like it, but uh, I'm going to wear a different color. But that's number eight. I'm making a little eight. What I have decided to wear is called Airy Fairy. And I'm looking for my lip brush. I can't find it, so I'm going to use the back end of my IT Cosmetics brush. It's actually a smudge brush. This is number 70, Airy Fairy, and I'm using my smudge brush from uh, IT Cosmetics to use it as a lip brush. And actually worked really nicely as a lipstick brush. I actually think I would use it again that way. And Airy Fairy is a nice looking uh, lipstick very basic it's not too dark and it gives your lips a nice natural color airy fairy see I'm doing the airy fairy dance there and I'm not sure what I'm doing here oh I'm swatching for you this is the airy fairy swatch that's what's on my lips let me tell you one more time. All right, I dropped it, but here's the gloss. Okay, this is the Stay Glossy Lip Gloss in 750. It's called Immortal Charm. And I will admit to you that I bought this for the name and the fact that it's a lighter color. So, there it is. And I'm going to spray some Mary Kay Finishing Spray, which is made by Scandinavia, because this makeup is so dry on my skin and I look like such a cupcake. I am putting this on to give me a little bit of dewiness, because I don't have any dewiness. Now I'm undoing my raggedy hair, which is growing in. And now we're going to try another lipstick. This is the Rimmel Show Off Lip Lacquer in Celestial. This actually has a different name in the UK. I've removed my other lipstick and I'm going to put this on. I'm not going to line my lips with this because it's such a strong um, lip lacquer that you can line with it as well as gloss. This is very handy to take in your purse if you're going somewhere. Celestial, this is called. It's a little bit brighter than what I normally wear, but I think it really um, takes away from the sallowness of that makeup. <laughs> Okay, so I think this is my little old uh, London gal's face. And uh, let me show you what it looks like with, yeah, Viva La UK. <laughs> God save the Queen. And this is what I look like with my wig on. 
and this is how you're used to seeing me. There's my Mind the Gap cup. Everybody have a wonderful weekend. Play safe. Have a beautiful day. Take care, toodles. Yes? Yeah, uh, just have to throw some clothes on. I'm ready to go. I just finished filming. I really would like another coat.